Haben Sie nur das oder? Luther, Luther. Das ist so wie ein Musikinstrument neben mich auf dem Sitz. Mal sehen. Luther goes traveling. And a Lutheran with him. The German pastor Gerhard Heckler has been called to Russia, together with his companion. I hope he gets to St. Petersburg in one piece. For Pastor Heckler, it's a dream come true. Hello. This is not his first visit to St. Petersburg. Both places are home to me, Germany and St. Petersburg. Home, Luther. Welcome, Pastor Hechler. We've been expecting you. My goodness, who have we got there? This is where the story begins in the little town of Seeheim in Germany, two months before Pastor Hechler set off with Luther for St. Petersburg. Gerhard Hechler's family is his tower of strength, his wife Heidi and her cooking. Gerhard, you carve, please. Sure, that's my job. My husband likes gravy, and he loves a bit of meat like this, with lots of gravy. That's something I discovered in St. Petersburg. When my wife was there, it was more of a home. When she left, the German consul asked me, how are you managing now that your wife is gone? I told him, I cook like a cowboy, fried meat with potatoes and gravy. And he said, add some beans, half a can. You can eat that for days and then you don't have to wash the pan. And at the end, bohnen, a half a dose. That can be eaten for days long, you don't have to wash the pan. It was very convenient, but depressing in the long term. So I like to be here or with my wife in St. Petersburg. So, Dinner's ready. Oh, mm. so, with his four children and six grandchildren, Pastor Gerhard Hechler is a staunch advocate of family life, unlike many of his contemporaries. In the wake of the student revolution of 1968, we questioned everything. But then I matured. And today I would say that I hold conservative values. I hope there will be a renaissance of family life. And a renaissance of the evangelical faith in his church in the mountains. After God and the family, Gerhard Heckler's other great passion is music. Sunday evening is devoted to the parish orchestra. Music is the soul of this parish. The playing doesn't have to be perfect, but it must come from the heart.
The church service is something of a concert. It brings the community together. I became a Protestant gradually. After high school, I wanted to work with people. And at first I thought about studying social sciences, but then I soon switched to theology, and that turned out to be my thing. At christenings, confirmations, weddings and funerals, the pastor is both a father figure and a friend. He treats his parishioners as equals, without fuss or formality. Good evening, and welcome to our evening service this Sunday with a celebration of the Last Supper. I inherited from my mother a curiosity about people. I have a positive interest in them. I'm curious about them. I want to share their joys and sorrows. So for me, pastoral work is a wonderful way to be with people. Here, for instance, people with senile dementia live upstairs, while downstairs there's a children's daycare center. It was founded by Pastor Hechler and is used by his little granddaughter Luca and nine other children. They go and see the elderly people upstairs once a month. That's what the church is for, to help the weak and the sick, and to be there for the young. Gerhard Heckler believes that Christianity is not just a matter of going to church. The Lutheran church today offers people so many different things. So many that critics say it's like a department store. I don't view it that way, though there is indeed a lot on offer. When I was young, the church didn't organize events, hold church youth days, and invite bands or show movies at swimming pools. These parties, these musical events would not have been possible, but they're great. Gerhard Heckler has been invited to church headquarters and he's offered a new job as pastor in St. Petersburg. The German Lutheran Church doesn't stop at the borders of Germany. And he's been invited to take this gentleman in red with him. Yes, where are you going to put him? Well, it's the biggest Lutheran church in Russia. There's room for plenty of Martins. We'll find a place for him in the sanctuary. He'll be elevated a bit there. I remember when I was young in churches back home, there always used to be a picture of Luther in the pulpit. But they've all been removed now. Farewell Germany! A new parish, 1800 kilometers away. Russia, here we come. St. Petersburg. Martin Luther's new home and Gerhard Hechler's new parish is the famous St. Peter's Church, right in the center of the Russian metropolis. The famous reformer makes an eye-catching figure in the sanctuary. St. Peter's Church has a long, exciting and dramatic history. A history that is intimately connected with the city of the Tsars and of Russia as a whole. It was built in the 1830s to replace an older and smaller Lutheran parish church. The plot of ground was a gift from Tsar Peter II.
most of the parishioners were German, and that is still the case. The church is not only used for services, with its excellent acoustics, it also serves as a concert hall, with seating for an audience of 700. Originally, no fewer than 3,000 worshippers could gather in this impressive building, constructed in the style of a Romanesque basilica with elements of Russian neoclassicism. Then, on Christmas Eve 1937, the Soviets closed the church and shot the two pastors. In the early 1960s, the building belonged to the communist youth organization, the Young Pioneers. It was converted to house a swimming pool. St. Petersburg residents called it the Swimming Pool Church. It is a bit shocking, but on the other hand, I myself learned to swim as a child in a beautiful 19th century building just like this. And there are still many people living today who say, I learned to swim here, and it was wonderful. We had fun as kids. And now I'm glad that it's a church once again. The architect who converted it into a swimming pool was still alive after perestroika. And he said, you should be happy it was a swimming pool. That way the church survived. Other church buildings met a worse fate. Traces of the Soviet past are still visible in the basement, old tiles from the pool. This was originally the site of the altar. The church was resurrected in 1993. With money from Germany, the swimming pool was covered over to create a new floor for the church. A walk through the basement is a journey into the past. St. Petersburg's German past. The, um, Deutschen Citizens of German origin enjoyed considerable freedom here, otherwise they wouldn't have come. They were hard-working, scientists, craftsmen, doctors, pharmacists, teachers and industrialists, such as Siemens and others. They made a significant contribution to St. Petersburg, and to Russia in general. And I think this wonderful history is why we Germans have such a good reputation among the residents of St. Petersburg today. But that history was not always wonderful. These murals depict how the Soviets banned all churches, and the German Russians were sent to Siberia during the Second World War. In Stalin's labor army, they were forced to toil under inhuman conditions. Stalin viewed the German Russians as potential traitors. I have come to realize that these people lost the war several times over because of the various deportations. It was midwinter, and they were crammed into cattle trucks for days on end. It must have been dreadful. Men, women, and young people from the age of 16, I believe, were made to do forced labor for several years. Many of them died. And I think it's awful that we didn't even know it happened. It wasn't mentioned in our history books or at school. A small chapel in the basement is dedicated to the memory of the victims of the Stalin regime. Today, St. Petersburg is a completely different city, in a completely different country. And Germans are more popular than ever before in the history of the two nations. It's tremendous. Ships sail by, people from all over the world. It's a very vibrant and lovable city. 
And it is a city that is proud of its religious tolerance. German Catholics also have a church here. There are also Armenian, Swedish and Finnish churches in the city centre. St. Petersburg is a city with many faces and many religions. Today, Pastor Hechler is visiting his Russian ladies. They are the backbone of the parish. I usually sit here. Seven dedicated women engaged in parish work who also enjoy a little tea and cake with their pastor. A warm welcome to you all. It's good to see you. And Russian hospitality as well. I want to thank you. <laughs> and I would ask you to sing the Bonhoeffer for him, page 65. Chest Piat. I learned that at evening class. The famous poem by the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was executed in a Nazi concentration camp, sung in a city where a million people died when it was under siege by Nazi Germany during the Second World War. The hymn is sung as a warning never to repeat those horrors. But Pastor Hechler is also deeply engaged in the present and always looking to the future. I have a lot of experience in social projects. I've organized home nursing, a community of people suffering from senile dementia and everything that that involves. I find none of those services in Russia. But I can't say, look, this is how we do it, follow our example. That would be inappropriate. And besides, it's not my job. I can only talk about what we did and then leave it up to my Russian audience to make of it what they will. Or I can pick up on an issue that's already of some interest here. But I talk only about how we dealt with it, because our societies deal with such matters so differently. I like him very much. In fact, I'm in love with him. We all are, really, with all my heart. He's so cheerful and open-minded. That's very rare. I like his Protestant way of doing things. It's very well suited to St. Petersburg. Modest, ascetic. He's a real Petersburg intellectual. He fulfills his role wonderfully. He's truly in his element. This morning, our Petersburg intellectual is on an outing. He's on his way to the famous Valam Island in Lake Lagoda. It's the site of an old monastery that is a bastion of Russian Orthodoxy. The other passengers are Orthodox Christians. It's a new experience for a German Protestant. Beautiful. I didn't realize that the lake was so big. What a wonderful landscape. 
And nice people, too. They're all pilgrims. The women are wearing scarves. They're going to the monastery. I imagine that they're looking for something there. So are we. Simply something different. And to share in the life of the monastery so far as that's possible. I think it's wonderful. One of the pilgrims is Julia, who loves the peace of Valam. Gerhard Hechler and his Orthodox companions will spend two days here in one of Russia's most famous monasteries. They'll get to know the monks and other pilgrims. Valam was probably founded in the 13th century. Today, it's more vibrant than ever. To them, this place is holy. The way they chant these prayers really touches me. And the fact that holy people have lived here. There are cave monasteries in Greece and elsewhere, but this is really impressive. And it lives through the piety of the people. I think that's wonderful. People come to Valam in faith and to entrust their needs to God. Yulia is 30 years old and was born with the HIV virus. With, with God, religion, mama, 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 Freddie, Freddie, Freddie Mercury. Yes. Uh, he prays uh, to God, uh, mama, mama, uh, very good songs. It's a Bohemian Rhapsody, I like it, Bohemian Rhapsody, I like it. Yulia tells Pastor Heckler her story. It turns out that they share an interest in music. I am very involved with music. <laughs> mosquitoes. You ask me if I wonder why me, why do I have the virus? I no longer ask that question. I just live and thank God that I'm still alive. I've learned so much from you. Not to ask constantly why something has happened to me, but to get on with life. That's great. I'd really like to support you and help you in this. And so, on this summer evening in Valam, Pastor Hechler ministers to Julia. Pastor Hechler is back in St. Petersburg. It's Sunday morning, and he has his parish duties. Tatiana! <laughs> uh, the embodiment of summer. I am their pastor. I fit the picture. Because of Eastern Orthodoxy and the Russian tradition, they have a rather different view of pastors. They put them on a pedestal. I noticed a benevolent distance, but also a great warmth. On Reformation Day, I came an hour late to the service. I'd been traveling in the Baltic with my wife and daughter. And the parish breathed a sigh of relief. Our pastor is back. Stay here as our pastor. Because I fit the picture with my wife and children. And they received me with great warmth. 
Und äh, I am one of them. Große Herzlichkeit, wie Sie mich hier empfangen. Also ich gehöre dazu. Das. <lacht> Everything will end well, and if it doesn't, it's not the end. 